Who Dances. Edward Villella. He was welterweight boxing champion of the New York Maritime Academy. Now he is a star of the new generation of male dancers that is exciting the world of ballet with breathtaking speed, power, and manly art. In the next hour, you will see into the world of Edward Villela through the events of a special day in his life when he is challenged by a crisis that is feared by every dancer. Villela's art is built on his physical prowess, which is constantly being tested in rehearsals and in a punishing schedule of performances with the New York City Ballet, often eight in a single week, that push his muscles to their limits and deplete his strength with several kinds of tiredness. You know, breath is one tiredness, and the uh, fatigue in the muscles is something else. Uh, you know, the muscles don't know anything about, about emotion or the mind or how, how tired your being is. All they know is the, the, uh, the amount of lactic acid in the, in the muscles, which slows them down and makes the cramps and, and doesn't let the blood get out. That's all muscles know. Muscles will go on all, you know, simply all day. If they're, if they're conditioned, if they're warmed up, and if, uh, if the blood can flow, if the circulation is there. Every ballet requires tremendous physical strength from a dancer. And this one, Tarantella, which Villela is dancing with Patricia McBride, is particularly demanding. Villela is able to make the quick steps and flying leaps look like easy fun. But beneath his professional ease, he is finding them even more difficult than usual. For some time, he has been overworking. Four other male dancers are out with injury and illness, and he has been dancing their roles as well as his own. Villela himself is rarely out of action, and his strength seems inexhaustible. But this is an extraordinary day in his life, November 19, 1967, when he's scheduled to dance an exhausting succession of three major roles. And even now, as he dances the first, he is feeling the physical strain of recent months. Edward Villala cannot be sure how long he can maintain his power and control.
This is just the beginning of a long day for Valella, the first of two performances on the same matinee. Ordinarily, he would not try to dance three bravura roles in one day, but circumstances demand that this evening he also dance his most punishing role, the Ruby's part of Jules. When Edward Villella returned for his next matinee performance, the audience of nearly 3,000 saw him collapse on stage. All the fatigue sat in my muscles, you know, from all the overwork. And uh, I got muscle spasms in both sides. And they, you know, you straighten your leg like this and it catches. And then you land and you land on a straight leg. You know. The muscles just lock. Come on, legs. Speak to me. I haven't begun to flex them yet. You know. I'm afraid to do it too sharply. If I do it, they may just lock again. But that's that's because all the blood is in there, you know, and it, it can't get out easily. After the shock of the only collapse he has ever suffered on stage, Valella is trying to decide whether or not to risk an attempt to dance his big role in rubies this evening. A bad landing on an inflexible leg could cause another collapse or tear muscle and ligament to permanently impair his dancing career. The New York State Theater has been sold out in advance for every performance of the Jewels, the most spectacularly successful ballet in years. The centerpiece of Jewels is its sensational rubies section, and the male star of rubies is Edward Villella. How's it feel? On stage, please. On stage for rubies. Musicians in the pit, please. Musicians in the pit, please. All right, I'm going to get down here and bounce around. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. To understand some of the stakes for Valella in his performance of Rubies, we are going to see something of the world of Edward Valella and events leading up to this moment in his life. Behind the upcoming Ruby's performance is a life disciplined to physical control, the rhythms of music, and the patterns of choreography. Villela lives in a brownstone house he and his wife have restyled in Manhattan. Ruby's, like all ballet, began as patterns in a choreographer's mind inspired by music. Villela has choreographed a number of works himself. Now he is listening to Prokofiev's Violin Concerto No. 1, for dance patterns he will choreograph. the intricate patterns of rubies in mind along with more than 20 other roles including George Balanchine's Nutcracker to this music by Tchaikovsky. Villala learned the 
patterns of rubies by watching Balanchine as he worked out the movements. Though steps can be notated, the only satisfactory way to communicate all the nuances of ballet is directly from dancer to dancer. Now, Villela is passing on Balanchine's choreography of the Nutcracker. In the months leading up to his collapse, Villela continued to add to his workload with the New York City Ballet by also performing with other companies and by undertaking dance concerts throughout the United States. He is preparing this group for a concert appearance. Rehearsing in this troupe is his wife Janet, who was a member of the New York City Corps de Ballet before they were married five years ago. Patricia McBride co-stars with Villela in many of his concert appearances. This is one of Villela's many concert appearances. In a romantic style choreographed by himself, Villela and Pat McBride conclude the Shostakovich Ballet Suite at Canarsie High School in Brooklyn. The program will consist of a demonstration of ballet dancing. Mr. Valella. The less likely his audiences may be, the more Valella is challenged to put across his view of ballet. This is a New York City high school he once attended. This morning, he will be assisted by Miss Patricia McBride. It gives me great pleasure now to present Mr. Valella. Morning. Well. We're going to talk a little bit about ballet, as you've been so informed. I'm a ballet dancer. Uh, as you know, a former student of this school. Now, uh, this thing, ballet, what, you know, what's, what's ballet? You think of swans and, you know, everybody. It's very limpid and overly poetic and a little... Okay, what is it? Uh, for me, it means to have total control of your entire body. Now, take athletics, for instance. Uh, I'm fairly familiar with that. I won my letters in uh, high school in baseball. I won uh, letters in college also in baseball. And uh, I was also welterweight boxing champion of the Maritime College. Now, when a, an outfielder is chasing a fly ball, that's movement, he's running. He has, he has a technique, but he runs the fastest way he can to the point where he has to get the ball, and if he jumps, he jumps the best way he can, fine. And he makes the catch, it's spectacular, looks great, and so on. Now, if I were to do the same thing, let's eliminate catching the ball, let's say running and jumping, uh, it's not the fastest way I can move, it's not the way that's easiest for me to move, I have to move within the rules and regulations. I have to hold my shoulders down. I have to hold my arms in a certain position. My legs have to be in a certain way. My feet have to be pointed. My legs have to be turned out. I have all of these things going on when I'm doing that simple run and a jump. You say, why bother with all that? We're interested in form and line. I can't just stick my hand out like that. There has to be a form, there has to be a line. How am I going to do it? Well, I can't hold it like that, that's too rigid. Can't hold it like that. It's a 
a little uh, it's overly poetic uh, it's a way to put it. I take the line from the top of my head, right down the side, the shoulder, the elbow, straight to the tips. And this is how I would stand on stage in a, this particular position. What I think I would like to do now is uh, introduce my partner, Patricia McBride. <clears throat> Suddenly, you see, she's standing up on her toes. And you say, gosh, it must hurt. How does she do it? Is a shoe made of steel? No, it isn't. It's made of satin. The strength is in the toes, so she can support the full weight of her body on one foot. But because it's a far more delicate balance, one other element is added uh, to dancing, and that's partnering. Because the girl has that delicate uh, situation, I, as, as her prince, her cavalier, her gentleman or whatever, I, I have to help her. And uh, that's called supporting or partnering. The men are concerned mostly with presenting the lady, and with jumps, the bravura, the strong. Edward Villella was eight years old when his mother used to make him accompany her to his sister's dancing classes, where at first he sat on the sidelines. And I used to sit there and fidget. What do I have to sit here for? And she said, why waste your time? Why don't you try a class? I said, my God, I'd never be able to explain that. How am I going to explain that to my buddies, my baseball buddies? She said, well, I'll try it. I said, no, she insisted. First class. I took, I loved it. Villella, like every ballet dancer, must take class every working day of his life, some 90 minutes of exercises, beginning slowly at the bar and progressing to the most strenuous leaping exercises. This is the class of famous dancer and teacher Stanley Williams of George Balanchine's School of American Ballet. In class, the dancer repeats every detail of his basic technique and stretches and tones his muscles to support the strains of dancing. Edward Villella missed four years of classes and ballet training when he stopped dancing at 16 to go to college, a grave loss at a crucial time for a dancer, and one whose effects proved nearly disastrous when he returned to dancing at age 20. The worst part of all of that was in getting back I was so anxious and so frantic to get back and make up for lost time that I worked harder, faster, more. I took two, three classes a day, 
work like a demon. If I had terrible aches and pains, I'd work right through them. If I had tight muscles, I'd continue to work. And it only made the muscles tighter. There are 300 muscles involved. And, and just a slight movement, you can hurt your neck or twist your foot. But, but you can't always know with this turning out, with this stretching, with this pulling. At the bar, the dancer constantly strives for perfection of form in every movement. His feet always held in the rigid discipline of five classical positions, while he maintains comparable arm positions throughout every exercise, and even as he stretches to loosen the muscles of his torso. The flexibility, I, I didn't have flexibility. It was cramped and there were, it was always tough to move and I always had to force. As I could feel that it was almost like a disease in my muscles and my legs. I was almost desperate about it. After he has completed his basic exercises holding on to the bar, the dancer goes through them again, unsupported, adding the whirling movements of a pirouette. And really what I had to do was to just stop start all over again, slowly, quiet, and only work on certain things until that part of my body gave in, which would then allow me to work on other things. At 21, even as he danced major roles on stage, Villela began a drastic remaking of his technique and muscle tone, which took years to accomplish and continues to this day. With complications added by a back injury, that sometimes causes him cramps and muscle spasms. It's getting better also because I'm working better. And the, uh, the muscle spasms and cramps uh, are not on top of the muscle spasms and cramps that I got just from working frantically and badly. By the end of class every day, Villela's muscles have been warmed up for the tremendous flying leaps he will be making in the strenuous hours of rehearsal and performance that follow. These jumps are from the choreography of rubies. What happens uh, in a jump is to have everything working for you at the same time. So you get phew, the explosion at, uh, all at the same time. And it's, it's basically the push from from the thighs, from the calves, and lastly, the foot. You have to push from that full platform and then go straight up. You can see that snap of the knee. Well, at the same time the knee snaps, you also have to flick the foot. Beginning the Ruby's pattern again, Villala is rehearsing one of the high points of the Ruby's performance he will be trying to coax out of his tired and cramped legs. This section contains 100 steps and jumps to the side, backward, forward, revolving and turning corners. But it represents only 40 seconds out of the Ruby's 20 minutes. In this spectacular jump, Villala makes two turns in the air and lands turning a corner. Uh, you, you get this feeling of exhilaration. You also get, get in a strange way